Hi, my name is Yardana and I want to talk to you about why I am anti-circumcision and um, debunk some of the more common myths out there, so I'll begin. Number one, it's cleaner. How so? When it is first performed, it is extremely difficult to clean an open wound, which is extremely prone to hemorrhaging. True. Then a scab on your son's most sensitive parts. Your baby will kick and scream and be traumatized by the changing of the bandages, let alone the procedure. When you're older, being cut doesn't guarantee that you wash yourself either. That's up to the individual and whether they learned proper hygiene. Also, if you believe that a man should be cut because it's easier or cleaner, you must also believe that a woman should be too, because it is a hell of a lot more intricate to clean a woman's bits than it is a man's. And I hope to heavens that you would be outraged at the thought of circumcising a woman, right? Number two. It's only a piece of skin. Not true. For most boys, the foreskin is fused to the prepice and does not retract until approximately 11 to 15 years of age. So in circumcising before then, damage, uh, damage is also done to the prepice and or penile shaft. I have a simple visual guide for you that will show you how circumcision destroys around a thousand nerve endings and takes away approximately 36% of the penile shaft skin in the average penis. Don't worry, it doesn't show anything terrible. Um, I'll put that in the description. <sighs> Myth number three. When they're young, they won't remember it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Not true. Okay, they probably won't remember it, but that doesn't mean it won't affect them. Traumatic events shape who you become your entire life, starting as early as the stress your mother endures while pregnant with you, continuing into the distress you may experience from an imperfect birth, and indeed do forced traumas such as circumcision and many others such as inoculations and spankings, but I won't get into those yet. Myth number four. He'll be embarrassed if he doesn't look like the other boys in the locker room. This argument, as many of these, only really applies if you live in the USA or Israel. Okay, if you're a good parent, you should also teach your son to be confident in his body so that he won't. You should also have already discussed with him why he doesn't look like other boys before this other with before this situation arises. Isn't this a no-brainer? Sorry, that's my own boy giggling in the background there. Who might I add is happily intact and will be as long as we have anything to say about it. Number five. Well, I want my son to look like his dad. It's not really a myth so much as just plain ignorance. He already does look like his dad, unless his mother is hiding something. Why do his genitals need to look like yours? Should mom grow a penis too so that the whole family can match? Are you going to find someone to tattoo and pierce and dye your baby's hair exactly the way dad's is too? If you lost a limb, would you sever the same limb on your baby so he wouldn't wonder why you look different than him? Great logic. Some people, I swear. Myth number six. It can be removed without any adverse effects. The foreskin's anatomical function is extremely important. Not only is it the most prime erogenous tissue, it also protects the glands in the way an eyelid protects the eye. When circumcised, the glands dries out and becomes keratinized from rubbing against clothing. It also becomes calloused and decreases in sensitivity. Peyronie's disease can also occur later in life as a direct result of circumcision. Myth number seven. Circumcision prevents venereal disease. False. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics admits there is no link between circumcision status 
and venereal disease, or STD, transmission. Number eight is another that isn't really a myth as much as a really silly argument. I was circumcised and I am or my partner slash spouse is happy with my penis. Well, I'm glad that you are happy with your penis. That's wonderful. And no sarcasm intended. Whether you are circumcised or not though, I think it's extremely important for a person and their partner to be happy with their body. However, just because you're happy with it doesn't mean that everyone would be happy with that decision. Say, on the chance that your son would not be happy with that decision, why would you force him into it before he can speak for himself? You're taking a risk that he will grow up and resent you for what you have done to him and his sexuality. Myth number nine. Hygiene will become an issue once they are old and no longer mobile enough to clean themselves. Okay, that is also true of women. We don't circumcise women for this fact. Nursing home nurses do their jobs with females, so they need to buck up and do their jobs with men and get the fuck over it. Myth number 10. The ladies like it better. Sure, some do. It is a fact that male circumcision is, however, linked to painful sexual intercourse with females. The foreskin provides essential lubrication, so without it, an added lubricant is often needed for comfortable intercourse and or masturbation for circumcised males. Myth number 11. A male must be circumcised to be Jewish. Nope. Any child born of a Jewish mother is a Jew, be they circumcised or not. Most of the Jewish culture actually is not circumcised and in fact many holy Jewish figures in the Bible and otherwise have not been circumcised. There are also alternatives to circumcision, such as a bris shalom celebration slash ceremony that can still be held without human rights being violated. Myth number 12. It won't hurt. Um, okay. General anesthesia is way too dangerous for infants, and local anesthesia swells the an area to an extent of making a poorly performed surgery too likely. Not only will it hurt a lot, it will hurt for weeks to come, before it becomes desensitized, that is. It may also affect your child's eating, as many infants cannot get into many breastfeeding positions due to groin pain after circumcision. This may cause your baby to lose weight and be further traumatized by hunger and worsened pain by increased sensitivity caused by said hunger. Number 13. Circumcision prevents penile cancer. Men have a higher chance of getting breast cancer, a 0.7% likelihood, than they do of getting penile cancer. A 0.09% likelihood. To argue that circumcision decreases the rate of penile cancer is like arguing that if we keep kids locked inside their bedrooms their whole life, they won't get struck by lightning outside. It is absurd. Yes, if you cut an organ off your body, you will not ever get cancer in that organ. If you cut off your breasts, we will not get breast cancer. Does that mean we should cut them off? And number 14 is just perhaps one of the most common arguments that we hear. I am or was circumcised and I turned out just fine. Well, I'm very glad that you turned out just fine, but is that worth the risk that the next child circumcised could even potentially suffer any of the adverse effects that I've mentioned here? And to close off, I would just like to state some facts. Fact. No medical organization in the entire world recommends circumcision. Fact. Circumcision does not prevent any STDs or VDs. Fact. Circumcision is a traumatic event that can and does affect a person's intelligence and mental well-being. Fact. 
The foreskin is more than just a piece of skin. It plays a vital role in human sexuality for both the man and his sexual partner. Fact. There is absolutely no non-cosmetic reason to routinely circumcise minors. If men were meant to have foreskins, they'd be born with them, right? In fact, there are other alternatives, even when a child has phimosis. But I will rest my case here for now. Unless someone can come up with any more arguments. Anyone? I'll list my references in the description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day!